You're listening to Shall We Unpack This? with your host, Leilani Carrasco. Welcome to the first episode of the SWAT podcast. Thank you for joining me today. It is one thing to have an idea for a podcast, and it is a whole other thing to bring that idea to life. I did not anticipate this first episode to be such a bear to record, but I think I'm on like my 15th attempt. I don't know. Like The uh, recovering perfectionist in me is very much showing, and maybe I should start attending the meetings again because, oh my God. Yesterday, I went up to my husband and I was like, help me. I am so in my head right now and I can't get out. I'm trying all these things and I can't seemed to get out of my head. And he came up to me and he pulled me close and he lifted this hair above my ear and he whispered, Hey, Leilani, Leilani, get out of there. (laughs) And if you know Tim, that is something that he would say. And it was just silly enough to kind of snap me out of my funk. And here we are. Without him, I don't know where I'd be on this journey. So the idea for this podcast came to me last year in an attempt to be a full-fledged, professional, mojo dojo career woman. I don't know why I thought this attempt would work because I'm practically feral. I run my own cleaning business for the past 10 years, and that has been the longest job I've ever had because I can call my own shots. My schedule's very flexible, which allows me to travel But at the same time, I was ready to expand, to sharpen my mind, and to be able to work from anywhere. And since I used to be a blogger, I thought, well, I like to write. Maybe I can try earning money in in copywriting. And so I took that route and knuckled down last year. And about September, I hit a wall and I... um, I just, I've always had a, I've always struggled with career. I mean, I feel like, like Teen Wolf, you know, you remember Teen Wolf and how he, when he'd turn into a wolf and he'd wear that basketball uniform, he looked absolutely ridiculous. And that's how I feel in the professional world. I, I mean, I just feel like this wolf in human clothes and it just doesn't work. And so I was like, well, I'm going to ask my friend, my professional friend, she's really savvy. Um, maybe she can give me some insight uh, in this area or if anything, maybe knock some sense into me because it's, it's time for me to have, I don't know, an adult job or like a, a refined skill of some sort. All the meanwhile, I've been hearing more and more people ask me if I'd ever thought of having a podcast or a YouTube channel. And I'm like, no, um, Again, I used to be a blogger. I it felt like such a rat race to continually try to think up content, and I got to a place where I didn't trust myself to be creative like that anymore. And besides, like I'm not an expert in anything. Well, what am I going to talk about to fill enough of a, a week, a month, a year? So I just I always turned it down. I just didn't even entertain the thought. So I'm in this meeting with this friend at the end of September, totally geared up for all the advice she has on on being a professional. And toward the end of the meeting, she asked me, hey, have you ever thought of having a podcast or a YouTube channel? I'm like, oh my gosh, here I am. Again, trying to be an adult. And I'm pushed back into the possibility of spending more time on a creative endeavor which is really more like me anyway. But I thought, you know what? I always get this this little phrase backwards, but I'm going with it. She was the straw to break the camel's back. Oh, wait, what? That is the right way to say it. I usually say she was the camel to break the straw's back. Either way, there's straws and camels involved, and she did it. So I went to bed that night and I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to entertain this idea now. But 
it's got to come under one condition. The idea has to come to me. I have dog paddled and forced things along so much in my creative past. And I'm, I'm going to let this flow. I am not going to strive. The idea has to fall in my lap. I'm not going to go looking for it. And sure enough, the next morning I woke up with the word unpacking in my mind. Unpacking was a word that came to me in a season where I had felt so lost. It was February of 2017, and it was the first time I had sat and faced my own bullshit. I had what I had with pride called a carefully crafted life. It all looked like everything was good. But I I had to admit to myself that it was not real. I wanted to be free of that life so much. And any time any desire to be out would come up, I would try to find another way to fix it or cover that feeling up. It was very much like being lost in the forest. And you, you're pretty certain that you came down that path and you, you race down that path and then you find that that's not it. So then you find in another path and you race down that way and it's still not it. And you're just, you have just worked yourself deeper and deeper. And I felt like that. And finally I was like, you know what? I have to stop and I'm going to sit here on this imaginary stump that I've created for myself and I'm going to wait and I'm not going to move. I'm not going to make any more blogs. I'm not going to create any more stories. I'm going to get real quiet and wait for instructions on what to do next. If it's God, if it's a big voice in this, out of the sky, I am not moving forward until I know what to do next. And that began a season of coming to life. Until that point, I was plastic. I see now how unrelatable I had made myself. I didn't know what compassion meant because the word compassion means with suffering. And I did everything in my power to avoid a life of suffering. I wanted a very safe, not messy life. And oddly enough, what I had created was the exact opposite. It was all fake. And it wasn't until just now that I realized I was living the Barbie movie. I was like dancing the night away. And then every once in a while, this creeping thought would be like, you know, this isn't you. What would it be like to get out of here? And I would just keep dancing and trying to cover it up. And just that phrase of that song that I'm not real is so relatable in that moment. And it was very much a born again experience. Not because I was filled with this fresh life, but I was like, ah, screaming and crying at everything. I'm feeling everything right now. I'm terrified. I'm finally feeling, allowing to feel all this unrest in my soul. What the hell am I doing? Oh my God. And at the same time, I don't remember any other spring where the flowers were in such vivid bloom and the smell of the air and the, just everything was vivid. It was all in technicolor. I was seeing all the life and feeling all the scary stuff. It was the born again aspect where the baby is emerged and it's like crying and screaming and covered and everything. That was my born again experience. But I was real and my eyes were opened to, oh, I know now what it's like to sit with my suffering. 
and questions that I'd never thought to ask other people before were coming into my head. Just my, my mind and my heart were flooded with conversations that I'd always um, felt shut off from before. and I didn't quite know how to engage. As a blogger, there would be times when I would crack a little and let some honest feelings out, but it was never the whole story. It was only as true as I could muster in that moment. But now it was like the floodgates had opened and I'm starting to see all of these gaps in my life. And the the biggest gap that led me to the word unpacking was one night in my friend's guest room where I was living after my separation. And I had to admit to myself that I wasn't a trustworthy person. I, d- I didn't know what, what really that meant outside of showing up to work on time or whatever um, the Bible said about being trustworthy. I don't know. All I had was like a religious tropes to go off of when it came to integrity and values and what really were my values? What, what is a value in integrity? I'm not a person of integrity either. That sounds very commitment driven. And I just want to run away from all commitment right now. But I know I'm going to one day want to be a trustworthy person. And I don't know how to be that. So I Googled. At that point, I was like, I don't have any answers. Maybe Google can tell me. So I'm just kind of Googling how to be trustworthy, trustworthiness, question mark, question mark. I don't know. And in that search is when I found a TED Talk from Brene Brown. And she was talking about the word trust. And it was so refreshing to hear her say that this is a big word. And we throw it around a lot but do we really know what it means to give someone our trust and to be trustworthy? And so she unpacked that phrase using an acronym called BRAVING. And I'll link the video in the show notes because it was life-changing for me to realize I'm not getting, it's not that I'm like missing out on a secret club by not understanding this word, it really does need to be broken down into elements, into measurable steps, into a roadmap of some sort, to a checklist, <laughs> if you will. And I was able to, to suddenly see, okay, this is how you gain trust. This is how you give trust. This is how you are trustworthy. And it led me to want to unpack other stuff. And that just started this journey. Again, I I really didn't feel truly alive until the end of my marriage. And suddenly I wanted to ask questions, but not just the same old questions. I wanted to ask new questions, different questions. And because I was human instead of plastic, it seemed like more and more people came into my life that were real, that had maybe some element to their life that I thought was too messy before. And I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't know what box to put that in. I'm plastic over here and I deal in plastic. I need things to go in nice, neat boxes. So more and more people with real stories, with flesh and blood and beating hearts became my norm instead of just safe conversations. As I thought about the people I wanted to interview on this podcast, I've known about their story, sort of, but I never thought to really ask them about that particular story or this experience. And I wondered, I asked myself, why am I drawn to that particular person's story? And it was because there was something that may not have been 100% my experience, but there was something in their experience that called to me. And I was like, you know, I may not have been a member of a cult, but I have participated in radical 
religion. So maybe there's some wisdom to unpack there. And I've never been estranged from my parents, but I do know what strife and family feels like. So maybe there's freedom to unpack there. I'm not a gay Christian, but I do know what it feels like to be loved conditionally. So what kind of love and hope can be unpacked? Listening to a gay Christian share about his faith. I didn't have to be an expert on anything to have a podcast. I just had to open up a chair and turn on a microphone and have a conversation. So this podcast is a place where we don't have to be plastic. And in fact, we get the opportunity to listen to new questions, different questions around things that maybe we've assumed about or judged, or maybe it's a little too messy and we don't want to look at it, and yet it holds the answers. So thank you for joining me for this first episode. Like I said, it has been a bear getting this far. <laughs> I've gotten in my way several times, and I'm, I will be unpacking the mindfuck of the creative process in a future episode, most definitely. But I'm excited for you all to be here to join me on this journey. However far it leads and wherever it goes, we're going to enjoy it together. So we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us today on Shall We Unpack This? Make sure to follow us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify 